I think we're live. I think we're live, Paddy. I think we're live. <laughs> it's been a. Thank God for that. It's it's trials and tribulations here at Elland Road. N- needless to say, if they ever get to the Premier League, they're going to have a few things to sort out. You can see over there, we've got the uh, the closed uh, season ticket ticketing booths. End of the season here at Elland Road. Leeds are done as far as their home campaign goes, and they they did it by picking up three points uh, by picking up a point and three goals. After being three 0 down against Norwich, um, Pad, have you recovered from the actual action on the pitch yet? Yeah, yeah. But as I was saying, now I've smacked my head on the fl- roof of quite a low ceiling where the managers came through as we tried to get to grips with the shocking Wi-Fi. So all in all, I'm not in the best of moods. Truth be told, uh, it'll and, make for great video though, Pad. This is the thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's even before we dissect what happened in the pit on the pitch. Even by Norwich's standards, you know, I've, just, I've actually written there that. When we look back in years to come on the 16-17 season, just play this tape if anybody wants to know what the whole season was like because, you know, I can't remember. I'm sure there have been instances, but as a whole 90 minutes, so in control, 3-0 up, cruising, gift them a goal literally seconds after the restart where Alan Irvin has literally launched into them players apparently at half-time because they weren't even back in their positions. I mean, how amateurish is that? That the red, you know, after you've scored a third goal and you're not back in your positions, ready for the restart, it, it's <laughs> it's schoolboy, it really is. And so, of course, from that, Leeds got a bit of belief. Gary Monk's gone in there, delivered a totally different team talk. They've re-emerged within another four minutes, set pieces again. We've seen that too often. Norwich, weak, uh, two or three chances to clear it from a corner, don't. Three two, and then we all know how, how it's going to end. Well, I mean, the only saving grace is that they didn't concede a fourth one after Stephen Naismith had been red carded, because the way the game was going the way the afternoon was going that looked entirely probable but um, from 3-0 up to hanging on for a point that's Norwich this season away from home isn't it it's bizarre though it doesn't I don't know if it really feels it didn't feel to me particularly like we've learnt anything today it's the same issues and the same failings I mean the, the fact it's not the first time they started the second half slowly is no. it for example and, and just never having any confidence that they can see anything out I mean regardless of Alan Irving coming in and doing whatever work he's he's done. It's, yeah. And it's, as you said, the players not being in position. So, kind of, we're, I guess it's just another game ticked off before we can get on with sorting yeah. the, the mess out. Big style, yeah. Um, and ultimately, you know, <laughs> people might have thought that Stuart Webb was, was over-egging the need for so many changes. We've, we've all seen the, the figure he's put on it, 12 or 15 of the current squad are all that will remain. But it needs it, it really does, because... If they want to achieve what they want to achieve next season and beyond, you're going to have to come to a Leeds big club, volatile atmosphere, and dig in because you're going to be under pressure. And too often this season, Norwich fold far too easily. And that's not a hallmark of any side that's got any pretensions to get anywhere near the top six, let alone get into the you know the, the Premier League. So massive change required because there's character deficiencies and flaws in that group of players. And it's all very well when they're three 0 up and. You know everything's going their way, but a little bit of adversity, and, and too often it's it's embarrassing, really. That, that time after time we see this. Um, you know, Preston obviously, I think it was more down to Preston were very poor in, in that first half at Deepdale. But you, you hoped if if they'd have followed up here today, which they should have done, maybe that was a corner turned and a little signal for for next season. But it feels we're right back to sort of the worst excesses of the Neil era away from home this season. You know, Barnsley away, Birmingham away, Sheffield Wednesday away. Same sort of downing of tools, really. Um, what more can you say, as you say, mate? I mean, that's it now on the road. We'll get QPR out of the way and then hopefully Stuart Webb is a man of his word. Yes, indeed. I, I kind of feel like we should have been talking about Stephen Naismith putting in a pretty decent afternoon's work, scoring a cracking goal and... I mean, I didn't actually catch the tackle in real time. I must admit, I think I have my head in my laptop, yeah, which is well, an occupational hazard. But uh, judging by everyone's reactions, I think they all knew what was coming. And that seemed like such a such a shame, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably frustration because we know he has that in his game. He plays on the edge. He's quite a, a nasty, in a nice way, if you're one of his teammates, kind of character. You know, he'd, he would have been seething that they had thrown away a three-goal lead. Um but there's no excuse. I mean, as much as Alan Irvin has called them unprofessional for what happened at the end of the first half, that was unprofessional as well because they were still creating chances and who knows, they might, in such a bizarre afternoon, they might have got themselves a late goal after Hernandez had equalised. Um, yeah, I mean, Stephen Nason, what can you say? Because the, <laughs> sub, the, the first goal was just sublime and that is what he can offer. He, he has the quality to influence games at this level. We're not seeing enough of it, sadly. Um, 
And too often, you're left with a sense of frustration and disappointment when you look at Stephen Naismith, and, and it's the same again today. I haven't seen it again back, um, but the lads in the press room seemed to indicate it was a two-footed lunge. Alan Irvin said as soon as he saw the challenge, he expected the red card. So I don't think there's any, any complaints there at all, really. His, his frustration's just got the better of him, basically. Well, we've all been there. <laughs> we've all yeah. been there, Pat. Uh, well, one more week then. We can enjoy QPR at home on Sunday and, and put the season to bed. I don't know if there's much more to say really here, is there? Anything else you want to bring up? No, I just need to find a pharmacist because I've got a banging headache yeah, think, now. All right, well, I don't want you to so, don't have an Alex yeah. Tetty talking no, about no. his pills uh, situation. So <laughs> no. we'll, we'll move on. Uh, thanks, every, thanks, Pad, very much. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, have a very good night. I'll remind you now, Pink and Show is on Wednesday at 7 p.m. live on YouTube and Mustard, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but until then, we'll sign off. Thanks very much.